Hi. So today let's have a look at what is correlation and what is correlation coefficient. Now to understand correlation, I'll take a simple example. Just take a look at this table. This table states the price of one quality of rice uh, and the quantity sold. Correct. You can see if the price is 35 per kg, the quantity sold is 100 kgs. Okay. This data is collected from one of the shops and you can see when the price of the rice increases, the quantity sold decreases. Right? This is a simple price demand relation between one quality of rice. Now, if I look at the graph properly, look at the trend properly, I can see when the price increases, the quantity sold decreases. So this is called as negative correlation between the two variables. So if I look at, take a look at this graph. Okay. The x-axis denotes the price, the y-axis denotes the quantity sold. If I plot all these points, okay, I plot all these points in this graph, this graph is called as a scatter diagram. Now, once you have made a scatter diagram, you can see the graph actually goes on decreasing when the price increases. So this is called as negative correlation between the two variables. So earlier, the scatter diagram was the only used, only tool used to measure the correlation between two variables. You see the second example. You can see this example, right? Uh, this table indicates the prices of onion and the quantity sold. Now, if you see carefully, the prices of onion keeps on varying throughout the year, but the quantity sold does not vary throughout the year much, right? There are few goods who does the, whose sale does not depend upon the price. So, again, if I look at the scatter diagram, the x-axis denotes the price, the y-axis denotes the quantity sold. If I look at these points, now you can see there, right? So the graph neither increases nor decreases. So I can say there is no correlation between the price and the demand of onions. Got it? So that is exactly what is covariance. Uh, there are a few goods uh, such as, I can look. Uh, okay. These are luxury goods. For the luxury goods, what happens? Uh, you can see the price is increasing. Whereas the demand is also slightly increasing. Okay, so what happens is, uh, even though the price increases, the customer thinks that the more the price of the product is, the luxury product, the higher the quality is. And that is the reason why it gets sold more than the other goods. Okay, so in this, if you see the scatter diagram, the price and the demand, you can see the graph goes slightly upwards. So I can say there's a positive correlation between these two variables, the price and the demand. So once I understood this, now what happened is uh, earlier statistician used to use the scatter diagram to explain the correlation between variables. But later on, what happened is uh, the statistician had different opinions about the scatter diagram. Uh, take a look at the scatter diagram. Now, some statisticians said the graph is increasing, whereas some said there is no proper correlation between the two variables. Now, this problem arises because the scatter diagram does not actually give you a mathematical value to a variable. So, what Carl Pearson did is, he calculated Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. That actually gave a mathematical value the correlation. Now you can see the symbol for this coefficient is r. Now if the value of r is greater than 0.5, then I can say there is a slight positive correlation. If the value of r is greater than 0.75, then I can say there is a strong positive correlation. And the value of r is equal to 1, then I can say there is a very, very high correlation between the two variables. So this is the way he defined correlation. Now the calculation of R will be seen in the next example.